Hello, welcome back. In this video, we're going to start getting into the validation of the file that we submitted. So in the first video, previous video, we created this form and a simple is set block. So let's go start messing around with that inset is set block. Here's my is set. So I looked at this files array, just really detecting whether it was there or not. So one of the things I'm going to do, we're going to take a little detour and I'm going to show you a, a useful tool in helping you understand this process. So you should maybe be wondering, what does this represent? What's in there? Well, one good way to do that, to figure it out, is to call vardump on uh, dollar sign underscore files. And the I'm going to call it on that specific array right there. So vardump is a function which shows you everything it can show you about an array. So I'm going to show you this. It's going to produce output up here above the uh, top of the file, which is weird, but it's simply just debugging information in the first place. So notice what we're looking at here. So it's an array with five fields. The first one's called name, and it's smithrock.jpg. The next one's type. That's image slash JPEG. The next one's temp name, which is some weird path name. Uh, error is kind of nothing, and size is that. So when I print it out, that files super global, those are the fields I have. And so the code that we write in the upcoming videos is going to be largely looking at those fields and determining whether we think there's something wrong with the file or not. So one important point to make is that we shouldn't just allow users to, uh, to upload files to our site. There's lots of ways that could go wrong. They could upload a malicious file, like an executable. They could upload a giant file, which eats up all of our bandwidth. Right, I mean, so there's no way that you would actually want to allow just unlimited access to your to your site. Generally, if you're going to allow users to upload things, you need to implement some kind of a login procedure, some kind of security. You're going to want to put quotas on things. It's a non-trivial process in the big picture, but in this video, I'm just showing you how to get the job done. So I showed you those fields that you're working with. And so now the next couple of things we do are just going to be related to uh, looking at that file and trying to determine whether we think it's an OK file to accept. Like I said, even if the file passes the sniff test, which we're going to implement here, it doesn't mean that it's actually safe. So I'm going to do a big copy and paste here because the code's kind of ugly, and then we'll look at the details. So the first thing I did is we're going to have a look at that error field. Now when I say the error field, I'm talking about that error field, right? We're going to look at every one of these fields at some point. They're all important to the process. So that's how you get at the error field. And it's what you call a two-dimensional array, right? This, the root kind of array is that image field. And then in we're indexing into that image field, calling some, finding something called error. And so this is one way to check for uh, like no, mis no problems with the file. And so basically, if the file upload seems to be OK, then basically I'm taking that output message and I'm concatenating onto it no error code. We're going to be producing tons of output here, and I'll show you how we're going to deal with that eventually. But for now, just accept that this is going to be a very verbose example. I'm trying to create something which is easy to troubleshoot. This isn't necessary in terms of functionality, but I am very concerned with troubleshooting this. So I'm going to put I'm going to put output in every if and every else. All right, and the else here would be that it, the upload did not go well. And if that upload did not go well, then I concatenate it on error code, and that might help you to figure out something. And there's also this flag that I'm setting to false. You might be wondering, what's that flag? Well, it's nothing yet, but this flag is going to represent whether we've detected a problem or not. And so at the point where we have a problem, flip that flag, add to our output, and let me save this and show you what it looks like. It's not going to be terribly interesting. We're just going to get an extra line of output down here. No error, no error code. At this point, I realize I should have had a line break on um, this. Well, actually, that's just not a great message, so I'm going to get rid of that altogether. And also, I'm going to leave that var dump there, and we'll clean that up later. So anyways, with the improved output, you've now got um, this thing happening, no error code. And so that doesn't tell you a whole lot. All that tells you is that the upload seems like it worked. Right, like there wasn't a network timeout in the middle and no unexpected errors. There are several error codes that you could get all due to different problems that you could have with the upload. In the event that you pass that test, you pass the first test, and then in the next video we'll do some heavier uh, debugging as we start to look at the size of the image and the file type. 
So at this point we've got the conversation started. So we're just using this kind of crude check to determine whether the upload was successful. And in the next two videos, we'll look at a couple more pieces of validation. Then when we're done with the validation, that's the point at which we can think about actually storing the file for good. So thanks for watching this video and be sure to tune into the next one.